Good morning and welcome everyone. Your Eminence, Archbishop El Pidoforos of America. Your Eminence, Metropolitan Salvats of Pittsburgh. Your Grace, Bishop Sebastianos of Zela. Your Grace, Bishop Antonius of Asani. Reverend Fathers, Forum Speakers, members of the Archbishop Iacovos Leadership 100 Endowment Fund and families, dear guests. My name is Dimitrios Logothetis, and I have the blessing of serving as Chairman of Leadership 100 for the last two years. I'm also very thankful to the board who extended me for two more years yesterday at the meeting. Thank you. I commit to you as I committed to the board that I'm going to pour my heart and soul into continuing to, to make this organization what it, what it is and what it deserves to be for the benefit of our church and the Greek American community. As I have, uh, some of you know, I had a 40-year career with the accounting firm of Ernst & Young. And so I love numbers. And I love numbers because they tell a story. So let me tell you a story. Let me give you a few numbers. This is our 33rd annual conference. This year we celebrate our 40th anniversary. We now have over 1,300 members and counting. We have over $110 million in the fund. Yes, yes, please. And very importantly, we have provided over 75 million in grants since inception. You all have the, the book with you. You can look through the details. And what you will notice is that our signature program, if you want to call it that, is our school, Hellenic College Holy Cross, and our support of the seminarians, yes. I heard yesterday that 75% of the priests that we have in our churches around the country have been helped. Their tuition was paid by this organization, Leadership 100, 75% of them. Now let me take you from where I left it off at the Grand Banquet last year for those that were there. As you know, since many of you were there, last year we had an outstanding conference in Scottsdale, Arizona, with over 500 participants. We thought it would be hard to top that and planned it for another, a 20% increase. We thought we would get 600 participants this year. But boy, did we get that wrong. We have 725 participants in this conference. The largest by far. A 40% increase. Amazing, right? Historically, we gain about 30 new members per year. If you do the math over the years, in the number of numbers that we have and the years we've been around, in the year leading in, uh, to the Arizona conference, or so last year, we gained 75 new members. And some of you might remember from the Grand Banquet that I asked the help of the board and all the members to try and get that number this year to 100. Well, I can report as of now that we have 89 new members this year, a 25% increase. But we need to get to 100 at, during this anniversary year and to match the increase in the conference of 40%. If we get to 100, we would have 40% increase in new members as well. I'm asking all of you to talk to the people that are here as guests. Many have come as guests with the idea that they would consider signing up for leadership. Please talk to them and encourage them to sign up over the next two or three days. And for the rest of you, you can always sign up your son, your grandson, your daughter, even your parish. I would love, by the end of the conference, which is officially the end of the year, the cycle, I would like to report that we have gotten to 100 members, new members. That is, I need 11 new members between now and then. 
So please work on it. Last year, we had a significant increase in participation by our young professionals. This year, it's even higher. We're pleased to say that we have over 250 young professionals attending our conference. Many of them are not here this morning. I know some of them are coming in. You will see them around. You will see them at the sessions that over the next couple, couple days. But it's, it's the most amazing story. If we don't get the youth, you all know this, we're not going anywhere. And our youth are coming to these conferences. So I'm delighted. Sorry. Over the last few years, we've had a great momentum as an organization and as a community. And you all know that. You see it. And could not be more pleased. We attribute our success, first and foremost, to our fantastic Archbishop El Pidoforos of America. Thank you, Your Eminence. He has done, as you know, an amazing job reviving our church over the near, nearly five years that he has been here, addressing some of the most critical issues that he faced coming in here, that he inherited. And he has a great vision for the future of our church in America, centered around unity, support and advancement of our priests, education, and most importantly, our youth. Our success, no doubt, is also attributed to the outstanding work and dedication of our executive director, Paulette Poulos. Paulette, what can I say? And of course, her, ex her exceptional staff. They have done an absolutely amazing job organizing this, this conference. I don't know how they did it. All I can say is I don't think they've got much sleep in the last few days. I walk by the room here. The, uh, the, and they're all, they're all working in the middle of the night. Please, let's give Paulette a rousing applause and thanks for everything that she does. I also want to recognize our incredible board of trustees. Yesterday, we had a meeting of the executive committee, which is made up of some of the more senior members of our board we have done an incredible job over the years to lead us to where we are today. These things just didn't happen overnight. And the Board of Trustees, the rest of the board, we had a meeting yesterday afternoon which was very successful at the General Assembly meeting. Tomorrow we will get into the details and I think you will be very pleased with the plans that we have for the next 40 or 100 years of this organization. Someone asked me if we have a theme for the conference. I told them that the theme for all conferences and everything we do as an organization is to remind ourselves that we are here as a national church and as a Greek American community because of the legacy of our parents and grandparents who made our church and our community their pri priority in their lives, in the lives of their children, us. Yes, Paulette. It is now our time to honor them by building further upon that legacy. We have been blessed to follow their example. Our generation has been exceptionally successful financially and in all respects. And you can all see it here, all of you and the rest of the community across the country based on the current needs and opportunities for our church and the Greek American community, we must step up our engagement and giving. This is the best legacy we can pass on to the next generation and ensure that orthodoxy and Hellenism will survive and thrive for the next generation. We are the stewards of the greatest legacy in the world. We may be a little bit biased. Well, this, we, we've inherited this great legacy that goes back so many years. Ancient Greece, Byzantium, Christianity, Western civilization, as you all know, would not be here if it wasn't for this legacy. Not many people other than us in the world can boast about that, but that comes with huge responsibility. And that responsibility is we need to do everything we can and pass this 
legacy onto our children. We have done so well that there's no need, in my opinion anyway, and I've shared this with my children, there's no need for our children and grandchildren to get 90 or to get 100% of our wealth. 95% would be just fine. They will do fine. 5% for our church and our community and the initiatives in the community, all the institutions will, will be the best legacy we can leave for them. So you all know that the Jewish community has a goal of leaving behind 10% or, or let's say sharing 10% of their wealth with their community, faith and everything else. Well, let's just start with 5%. That would be amazing. Have a, yes, please. Have a wonderful time this week. Enjoy the exceptional speakers. You would love them. I know you will. I've had a chance to meet some of them over the last couple of days. Just unreal. Learn more about our church and community, and most importantly, get to know one another better. Have fun. Thank you for attending. And now please enjoy a video prepared with the, with the history of, of our beloved organization. I hope you like it because... It's narrated by me, and I'm not ex an expert narrator, narrator, so hopefully you don't go to sleep. Please pay attention to the, to the video, and we'll come right back to you. Thank you so much for your attention. I plant your visions and mine, your dreams and mine, your hopes and mine, your future. future of your children and grandchildren. Those stirring words of Archbishop Iacovos, the founder of Leadership 100, at the groundbreaking of the Archbishop Iacovos Library, have inspired and motivated Leadership 100 for 40 years. I'm Dimitrios Logothetis, the current chairman of Leadership 100, and I'm here at the National Hellenic Museum in Chicago where legacy, renewal, and unity, celebrating 100 years of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, will be exhibited, including Leadership 100, 1984 to 2024. 40 years of philanthropic service. Archbishop Iakovos was a central and innovative leader in both organizations. The exhibit will be unveiled on September 15, 2023. We are grateful to John P. Calamus Sr., Museum Chairman and the Museum Board of Trustees for this generous initiative. This is the story of how Leadership 100 has progressed for 40 years supporting the Archdiocese, the Metropolises, Hellenic College Holy Cross School of Theology, local and national projects, and humanitarian causes. Since its inception, it has grown to 1,272 members. Greek Orthodox leaders, men and women of all ages, from every field, and has distributed $75 million in grants, making Leadership 100 a driving philanthropic force in the nation. The Archbishop Iacovos Leadership 100 Fund, a nonprofit organization whose purpose is to advance Orthodoxy and Hellenism in America through support of the national ministries of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, will celebrate its 40th anniversary in 2024. Founded by Archbishop Iacovos in 1984 as a Leadership 100 program, an endowment fund of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese through which Greek Orthodox leaders were asked to commit themselves to offer $100,000 each over a 10-year period to advance Orthodoxy and Hellenism. It was renamed in 1992 in recognition of the vision and leadership of its founder. Let us acknowledge those founding members, now all of blessed memory, who were outstanding business leaders devoted to the church, 
and the Greek American community. Arthur C. Anton, Andrew A. Athens, Thomas A. Athens, George K. Timplis, Peter M. Dion, Michael J. Harris, George P. Kokalis. The hallmark of the Archbishop Iacovo's Leadership 100 Fund, Inc., since its founding by Archbishop Iacovos, has been to define leadership as excellence and commitment to the Orthodox faith and Hellenic heritage, exemplified by its outstanding leaders throughout 40 years. The Leadership 100 chairmen, the first four were founding members, were among nationally prominent leaders, also devoted to the church and the Greek American community. They are Andrew A. Athens, George K. Chimplis, George P. Kokalis, Arthur C. Anton, John A. Payablas, George D. Begrekis, Stephen G. Jonas, Constantine G. Karras, Charles H. Kotros, George S. Tzandikos, Argiris Vasiliou, Dimitrios G. Logothetis. Leadership 100 arose from the concern of lay leaders to find new sources of revenue due to a shortage of funds for the operations of the Archdiocese. George K. Chimplis, the chairman of the Finance Committee of the Archdiocese and Council of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of North and South America, during its meeting in Denver, Colorado on October 19, 1984, put forward the approved proposal of his committee of contacting 100 persons who are financially well endowed and who might be interested in contributing $10,000 each to the Archdiocese on an annual basis for a period of 10 years. After Archbishop Iacobos intervened to emphasize that the obligations in the Archdiocese national ministries were increasing and that appropriate means must be found to meet these obligations, the debate ended, the vote was taken, and the recommendation on Chiblis's motion was adopted unanimously. The newly formed Leadership 100 program began its life under the direction of the legendary Archbishop Iacovos with Andrew A. Athens and George K. Chimplis serving together as co-chairman from its initiation in 1984 until the retirement of the Archbishop in 1996. Two priests, Father Alexander Carluzos, who served as coordinator from 1987 to 1992, and Father Nicholas Triandafilo, who served as executive director from 1992 to 1996, ran the day-to-day -day affairs from the office in the Archdiocese. In 1992, the name of the program was officially changed to the Archbishop Iacovos Leadership 100 Endowment Fund in honor of Archbishop Iacovos. During those early years, Leadership 100 grew steadily, with the first 100 members increasing to more than 300 members. Contributions reached close to $20 million, and grants, which began to be distributed in 1989, reached close to $3 million. A program of associate members to enable younger members to pay their contribution on a graduated scale was approved in 1994, became Leadership 100 Partners in 2007, and today it is known as Young Professionals who number 223 as of 2023. Among the major grants was one of $1 million for the building of the Archbishop Iacovos Library and Learning Resource Center at Hellenic College Holy Cross School of Theology in Brookline, Massachusetts. Archbishop Iacovos himself presided at the groundbreaking ceremonies on April 1st, 1996.
with the enthronement of Archbishop Spiridon in 1997, due to growing concerns about the vulnerability of the endowment, funds were transferred with his approval into a separate 501c3 nonprofit corporation, the Archbishop Iacovos Leadership 100 Endowment Fund Incorporated. It was later incorporated in the state of New York as the Archbishop Iacovos Leadership 100 Fund Incorporated. George P. Kokalis was serving as chairman and Father Mark Airy as interim executive director. During this period, funding was initiated for the Archdiocese Department of Internet Ministries in 1997 and for the Orthodox Christian Mission Center in 1997. Here we see Archbishop Spiridon with Vice Chairman of the Archdiocese and Council, John Katsimatidis, and Father Mark Airy, Interim Executive Director. A significant transition period for Leadership 100 began in 1999 with the enthronement of Archbishop Dimitrios, who was to serve until 2019. Kokelis continued as chairman until 2000, and Father Alex Carluzos returned as executive director, serving from 1999 to 2004. In 2000, Arthur C. Anton was elected chairman, serving until 2004. This was a significant period of growth in membership, contributions, and grant outlays, along with many other initiatives. With the launching of the Millennium Membership Drive, a national campaign led by National Membership Chairman Stephen G. Jonas and Father Alex, 186 new members were recruited in 2000 alone, leading to total membership of 514. By 2000, contributions rose to close to $30 million and grant distributions rose to almost five and a half million dollars. The annual conferences became a centerpiece of Leadership 100, to which hundreds of members flocked for stimulating programs and inspiring lectures. Prominent speakers appeared annually, and in 2003, the Archbishop Iacobo's Leadership 100 Award for Excellence was first presented to outstanding Greek and Greek American leaders, as well as Phil Hellenes on occasion, who excelled in the pursuit of their careers and exhibited the gift of leadership. In 2000, one of the most significant grant programs began with the awarding of scholarships to seminarians at Hellenic College Holy Cross School of Theology a program that would grow over more than two decades to $26 million. In addition, a program provided $885,000 to eliminate the debts of clergy who were burdened with their student loans, $700,000 to supplement the pension of the retired clergy, and $246,000 to assist clergy in need. Here we see Archbishop Dimitrios with Chairman Charles H. Kotros presenting the Archbishop Iacovos Leadership 100 Award for Excellence to Jim Giannopoulos, Chairman of 20th Century Fox. Other significant grants included the Greek Earthquake Relief Fund in 1999, Ionian Village in 2000, and the September 11th Relief Fund in 2001. Leadership 100 underwent major changes from 2004 to 2006, with John A. Payavlas becoming chairman, Father Dimitrios Andokas becoming executive director, and Paulette Poulos, the longtime executive assistant to Archbishop Iacovos, becoming development director. Due to the initiative of Payavlas and Vice Chairman George Barakas, the Leadership 100 offices were moved from the Archdiocese 
to the Olympic Tower in Midtown Manhattan. Father Antokas left his position in 2006 and George D. Barakis succeeded Payavlas as chairman, serving until 2008. Paulette Poulos was named interim executive director in 2006, becoming acting executive director from 2008 to 2011, and was named executive director in 2011. The first layperson and woman to hold the position. Significant grants during the tenure of Barakis included Hellenic College, Holy Cross, Information Infrastructure, and the Center for Family Care in 2007. Humanitarian assistance included relief in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina in 2006 and Greek fires in 2007. In 2008, Stephen G. Jonas, who had run the successful Millennium Membership Drive as National Membership Chairman, became Chairman of Leadership 100 serving until 2010. Leadership 100 recruited new members at an increasing number from 2009 to 2012, reaching 900 members in 2012, despite the financial crisis of 2008 to 2009. To address the crisis, Jonas appointed Charles H. Kotras as chairman of the Leadership 100 grant fund to administer a challenge grant of $1 million for the Hellenic College Holy Cross Scholarship Fund. Jonas was responsible for many other initiatives, including National Leadership 100 Sunday, started in 2009. In 2010, Constantine G. Karras became chairman, serving until 2012. By 2012, contributions rose to close to $68 million and total grant distributions to $32.5 million. Harris initiated a new grant program in 2011, partially funding all summer camps in the eight metropolises and direct archdiocesan district. Charles H. Cotro served next as chairman from 2012 to 2014, followed by George S. Sandikos from 2014 to 2018. Kotros, who had served as chairman of the Hellenic College Holy Cross Leadership 100 Scholarship Fund in 2010, initiated a change in the program that stipulated the grant amount to $1 million a year over each renewable 10-year period. The scholarship fund was renewed and reached $18 million by 2018. By 2016, under the tenure of Sandicos, contributions reached almost $77.5 million and grant distributions rose to close to $45.5 million. Sandicos was able to announce in 2016 that Leadership 100 had reached 1,000 members, but he also had to address the financial shortfall at the Archdiocese. Argyris Vasiliou became chairman in 2018 and served until 2022, guiding Leadership 100 during the pandemic and the subsequent celebrations of the Bicentennial of the Greek Revolution in 2021 and the centennial of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America in 2022, assisting in the funding of both celebrations. By 2022, membership reached 1,230. Contributions reached more than $93 million, and total grant distributions exceeded $70 million. In 2019, Archbishop Demetrius ended his service as Archbishop of America, and Archbishop Elpidophoros was enthroned. Archbishop Elpidophoros appointed Basileu Chairman of the Centennial National Committee and Leadership 100 Vice Chairman, myself, as Chairman of National Coordinating Committee for the 200th anniversary of the Greek Revolution. 
Major grants included the Clergy Pension Fund for $1 million in 2021, St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church and National Shrine completion for $6 million in 2021, St. Michael's Home Expansion Project for $2 million in 2022, and celebrations of the Bicentennial of the Greek Revolution in 2021 and the Centennial of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese in 2022, together with the 2022 Clergy Laity Congress for $815,000. With my own election as chairman in 2022 and Paulette Poulos continuing as executive director, along with the dynamic ministry of the young Archbishop Elpidophoros, who modeled his ministry on that of Archbishop Iacobos, Leadership 100 faced a new and challenging future with hope and confidence. Significant support continued for Hellenic College Holy Cross School of Theology, the national ministries, and all major grants. Support was also provided for the Orthodox Christian Fellowship, YAL conferences in Chicago and San Francisco, Orthodox Christian Prison Ministry, and Archdiocese Digital Transformation. Historic records were reached with membership now at 1,272, including 758 fulfilled members, and total grant distributions of $75 million. Humanitarian assistance included Balukli Greek Hospital in Istanbul and earthquake relief in Turkey and Syria. You have heard the story of Leadership 100 from 1984 moving forward to 2024, when we inaugurate the celebration of the 40th anniversary of Leadership 100 at this remarkable exhibit at the National Hellenic Museum in Chicago. Due to the generosity of Chairman John P. Calamos Sr. and its Board of Trustees, we are pleased to share our 40 years of philanthropic service with a wider Greek American community and public and encourage those of you who are able to join us and to paraphrase the memorable words of our legendary founder, Archbishop Iacobos. Help us plant your visions in ours, your dreams in ours, your hopes in ours, your future and the future of your children and grandchildren. Our chairman, Demetrius Logothetis, has told you the remarkable story of Leadership 100 at the National Hellenic Museum. That story continues every day at our offices here in New York, where we witness daily the commitment and joy of our members and those whose lives are transformed by our grants. Our work over the decades has been facilitated by our loving founders and chairman emeriti, the executive committees, board of trustees, and various other committees, investment, grant, audit, and membership, together with the dedicated Leadership 100 staff. Leadership 100 has led the way for four decades in demonstrating care and support for the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, for its clergy and presbyteros, its faithful and for all humanity, through philanthropic service at home and around the world, and it will move on in decades ahead. Leadership 100 has faithfully supported Hellenic College Holy Cross, the only Greek Orthodox school of theology here in America. Leadership 100 takes great pride in assisting in the education and nurturing of our seminarians preparing for the Holy Priesthood. Leadership 100 assisted the church in establishing a national presence in America, enabled the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese to implement technological infrastructure to communicate its message and vitalized its ministries to our youth, families, and clergy. 
Leadership 100 is not only critical to the future of philanthropy in the church, but it is essential to the future of orthodoxy and Hellenism in America. The story of Leadership 100, as it marks its 40th anniversary, its successes in membership, contributions, and primarily in grants, its support of the church is not complete without the story of how Greek Orthodox American men and women from all walks of life have come together to renew their faith and heritage and their commitment to the church in America. They have ensured that the legacy of their forebears is passed on to their children and their children's children. They have ensured a place in America for the perpetuation of their faith and their heritage and offered the tried and true values that will strengthen youth and our families, uplift those in need, and give hope to all in the new century and beyond. We are confident that under the spiritual guidance and capable leadership of our beloved Archbishop Elpi the Fotos, and with the continued support of our respected metropolitans, clergy, and the faithful, we will move forward toward our 50th anniversary with the same dedication to our beloved church here in America. I want to take this opportunity to ask Mr. John P. Calamos, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the National Hellenic Museum, who is hosting this exhibit over the last few months and will continue, I believe, for the next couple of months, to talk a little bit about the National Hellenic Museum as it is such a critical part of our mosaic across the United States to document our past and hopefully give us the strength and the understanding to move forward with our young people for the future. John, please. Thank you, thank you very much. At the museum, we always say, you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. So that's what the history is all about. So I'm grateful to be with you here today as a proud member of Leadership 100 and as chairman of the Board of Trustees of the National Hellenic Museum. The museum's mission is to share Greek history, art, culture, and the Greek American story to relevant and meaningful ways. It's a place where people gather to learn, grow, and celebrate. In our current environment about education, this is more and more important. We're not seeing our children learn what they should be learning, what we learned when we were children. My commitment to the museum is to both have a passion here with a mission and a desire to ensure our rich Hellenic legacy and pass it to the next generation. This past September, the museum was honored and grateful to receive a Leadership 100 grant, which allowed us to bring the legacy, renewal, and unity to Chicago, an exhibit about the first 100 years of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. Telling the story of our Archdiocese is essential to share our history, culture, and values with the next generation. Thank you all for the opportunity to do this. This exhibit demonstrates how the Greek Orthodox Church has connected Greek Americans to each other and to their past. At the museum, we always strive to make a connection between the past and the present, between the Hellenic legacy and the world. But we believe there is a value in finding the threads and band us together. We are a link to an unbroken chain that stretches back from the time of Homer to our parents and grandparents who, like all immigrants, made the journey to this country in search of a new home, a better life for their children. When you support the work of the National Hellenic Museum, you help preserve that chain and ensure the connections across generations, cultures, and time. Thank you, Jim Logothetis, and all the Leadership 100 for bringing this exhibit, Legacy Renewal and Unity, to the National Hellenic Museum. 
we invite Leadership 100 members to visit the museum to experience this beautiful exhibit and all the museum has to offer in the heart of Chicago historical Greek town. We look forward to seeing you soon at your museum. We would appreciate your support. And the exhibit has been very tremendous and we're looking forward again to seeing you all there. Thank you so much.